The Lord be with you. This is truly the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Special welcome to any visitors and guests here today. Uh, the worship service will be entirely on the screens. We, are, we haven't gotten to the point where we're doing uh, little bulletins at this, uh, yet. Um, and also, uh, we will have Holy Communion today, both, uh, both by individual, uh, individual cup, I should say, uh, so, and also with the host. And the way we do it uh, currently is, um, is that uh, we'll start with this side, we'll come up and receive the host and then the little individual cups, either wine or grape juice, and then uh, put the uh, empty uh, glasses into that, into that uh, bowl, and then this side will do the same thing. Uh, the ushers will help you with that to, to try to help you get going uh, that way. Uh, we practice Eucharistic hospitality here at Celebration. If you've been baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity, you may come forward to partake. If you don't wish to do so, you come forward for a blessing. Also, we do have a gluten-free option for those who have need of it. Uh, and um, also, um, we are inviting everyone to please, uh, we now have the yellow welcome cards back. You will note on the back of your, uh, on the chairs, uh, there are uh, little things with pockets that have little yellow welcome cards, also offering envelopes. Uh, please fill those out, uh, if you would, for us so that we know that you're here. Uh, those of you with long arms help those of you without, with short arms, so that, because they're a little bit far, far ahead of you, but you can get them. Um, uh, also, um, what else was I going to say? Um, I'll come back to it. Anyway, okay. Uh, next week is Bring One Sunday. Uh, essentially, uh, for a Good Hope Lutheran Food Pantry, is anything that is non-perishable, they will take. So please bring that next week. The Women's Bible Study is beginning again, I guess this Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Uh, the copy of the Bible Study is, is in the Preston mailbox, Learning Preston's mailbox there. Faith uh, Confirmation and Faith and Formation is starting up back up next Sunday. Faith for Formation and Fellowship is three years old to the sixth grade. Confirmation is seventh and eighth grade. Again, everything starts up next Sunday. Adult Forum is starting on September 22nd. Uh, and, and confirm with me, that will be in person? It'll be on Zoom. I, I said in person, at, uh, Zoom at one time, and said no, it's in person. Now I, okay. Okay, all right. So if you're interested in that, you see that guy there or that gal back there who's waving her arms if you want to participate in it, and they will make sure you get the link. Grab your leader hosen and Birkenstocks for Oktoberfest, October the 9th, 5 to 8 p.m. Tickets are on sale out there. Um, and it'll be before worship and also after worship. Somebody will be out there. Be happy to take your money for it. Uh, please sign up to bring food for Fellowship Hour. Also, remember, you not only bring food, but also help to clean up. <laughs> That's also helpful. Uh, for Fellowship Hour, uh, there's a list on the communication board. Just sign up for a Sunday. And uh, we, now that we are getting more back to normal, we need people, to volunteers to usher, to greet, but no handshaking, please, uh, and do Altar Guild. Please call or email the office if you'd like to help. Even if you haven't done it in the past, let us know because we can teach you what to do. Uh, we don't want to assume that you are still willing to do it, uh, so uh, please let us know. That's all I got. So let us now take a moment to uh, center ourselves as we listen to the prelude. <laughs> Thank you. 
forgot to, to mention, we are getting our worship services, we're getting the full worship service today with a few uh, minor uh, changes so that uh, we'll have uh, the full um, liturgy uh, today, so be aware of that. But please rise in body or spirit as we sing our opening hymn, Lift High the Cross. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
O oh God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation. And by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and we continue with the readings. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, word of life. <laughs> A reading from James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters. For you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also, the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not be to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives? or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Word of God, word of life. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist. And others said, Elijah. And still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? 
And Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. And then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter, and he said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father and the holy angels. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once there was a drill sergeant who picked on his boot relentlessly. He got it right up to him on the nose and he yelled at him and he said, I, get, I bet that when I die, you're going to make a special trip to my grave just to spit on it. No drill sergeant came the immediate reply. And just why not? Drill sergeant, this place made me sick of standing in lines. Hardship. Basic training, standing in line, sinus trouble, allergies, flat feet, illness, getting old, lots and lots of other things we usually and continually complain about. Sometimes it, get, it all gets lumped into the phrase, well, that's just the cross you're going to have to bear. Now, the expression obviously comes from the Bible, specifically the life of Jesus, and precisely from today's gospel and all of its par par parallels. Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they reply that people think that he might be a forerunner of the Messiah. I mean, he doesn't really look like a Messiah, but one of the forerunners, maybe. And then Jesus presses them for a more uh, personal answer. He says, well, you know me better than all those other people, so who do you say that I am? And Peter takes his heart in his hands, and he makes the big confession. He says, you are the Christ. Jesus then sees that we have to all step back and study about what that might mean. He basically says, hey, you know, that's, it's easy to say those words. It's easy to talk the talk. But do we know about walking the walk? So then he tells them about sacrifice and resurrection. Now, Peter takes exception to all this. And Jesus rebukes him in front of the disciples and then calls the crowds all together and tells them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever will save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's sake will gain it. And then he asks that motivational question, what in the world can you have? That's better than life. How can you pay God back for your life? I mean, he has everything already. Now, everybody living has some hardships, like standing and lying or having a hard-hearted drill sergeant. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. He, God is going to be with you in all of your trials, in all of your tribulations. He is there for everyone, absolutely everyone. But this challenge is for those who would seek to be like Jesus. 
kind of like the entrance to the African Game Reserve where there's a sign that says, Advance and be bitten. There's no escaping the pain of cross-bearing. And that is if we want to truly follow Jesus. That it's going to hurt in some way. You're going to lose something here. Now, reality, reality check here. Heart disease, gallbladder, cancer, MS, suicide, divorce, and getting zits. Those are not the crosses we have to bear. They are simply the consequences of being human beings. You don't choose those things. They just come from living. You may have problems with living, but you should also be thankful for, for living. And God, and faith in God will help you through all those things. What carrying the cross means is that you are willing to publicly display your faith and suffer any consequences that displaying might evoke. Now, suffering from Christ, for Christ, may seem long ago and far away, but it really isn't that long ago, and it really isn't that far away. It's like that time when there was a cross burning on the lawn of a mother and three children in Atchison, Kansas. In response to that cross burning, a candlelight vi vi uh, vigil was, was um, held in Atchison's downtown area, and the people attending there were, were asked to not only take part in the vigil, but to display flyers that that bore a large candle with the words, light a candle, but not a cross. Let your light shine. And the feeling they were trying to convey is that you can't stand quietly against such hate crimes. No, no, you have to stand up and speak out against them or risk becoming a silent partner in the violence. Much of the same reaction happened from the survivors and families of those killed at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church, you know, Mother Emmanuel, in Charleston, South Carolina. Remember what we heard over and over and over again when confronted, you know, when they were confronted with the murderer? We heard from them say the words, we forgive you. We forgive you. Jesus loves you. We forgive you. Are we able to take up a cross and not hide in the shadow of the cross that Jesus took up? Now, over the years, I've known many people who wear crosses and, and say that wearing a cross is a public witness, you know, daring to wear a cross. You know, in my lifetime, I can't say I've known wearing a cross to be really costing that much. My question is always, do these people really know what that means? Or is it just so much jewelry? But then I also ask myself, who did Jesus come to save? Did Jesus come to save the self-righteous? You know, me sometimes. Did Jesus come to save the despicable? Also me sometimes. Maybe when we look at the cross or uh, on someone, maybe we should also be asking, what is the meaning of that for us? Have I given up anything for Jesus? Have I denied myself for the gospel? Or have I denied the gospel for myself? Never mind what others say. Who do you say I am? Jesus asked. Oh, and is there just one cross for each of us, or are there several? And how do we choose between them? Indeed, we are the, one, are, 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 we are the ones choosing to take up the cross. So let's try to get away from the good old, oh, you poor dear, the cross you've been given has been, you've been given to bear mindset, and change it to the more activist, yes, I am willing to take up the cross because I believe in what Jesus calls us to be and how we are to respond to God's love. And if we look around ourselves, if we look around our church, our community, our world, at some point we will come upon a cross with our name on it. Some task, something that we, you know, couldn't avoid. Or I should say we could avoid, but we didn't. So the question is, will you take up that cross and follow Christ? Now, you've all heard of the historical figure named Spartacus, right? You all heard about him. 
you know, he was a slave that led an uprising in Rome from uh, 73 to 71 B.C. Pretty much nearly succeeded in freeing the slaves upon which the Roman economy was based. But after numerous victories against the Roman forces, he and his army were defeated by a man by the name of Crassus, who was put in charge of eight legions against him. That's around 50,000 soldiers. It's believed that Spartacus himself died in that battle, but in the 1960 Kirk Douglas movie, the movie tells that the, it says that the Roman general Crassus, who was played by Laurence Olivier, with the, had the slave army captured and rounded up on a big plane. And he addressed them, the multitude of them and offered them freedom if only they would give up Spartacus. If they don't, they would all die horribly upon a cross. Well, Spartacus himself stands up, steps forward to save all of his followers, and he raises his arm and he shouts proudly, I am Spartacus. But just then another lover of freedom, about 100 yards away, steps forward and, pr- and shouts, I'm Spartacus. And then another, and then another, and then another, and then another, and another. It really doesn't matter who Spartacus was because they all were Spartacus. When Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you are the Christ. And then Jesus then says, that will mean being rejected. That will mean being killed. But it will also mean rising to new life. And then Peter, being Peter, disagrees. And he argues. And then Jesus says to him, get behind me, Satan, because you are not on the side of God. You are on the side of men. I think what Peter is, uh, Jesus is saying to Peter is, back me up. Get behind this messianic, messianic enterprise and push forward. Help me out with your support. Oh yeah, it may mean dying, but I need your backing. I need your support. You know, in the movie Spartacus, the movie makers were trying to tell a parable about a great leader who died a sacrificial death among his followers. They wanted us to know that it was a parable. So they put Spartacus on a cross. They couldn't make that particular kind of movie about Jesus, though, because, remember, nobody backed him. Everybody ran away. So he died on a cross, and he died alone. I told the story before, but it bears repeating about a a woman who kept telling her pastor what she aimed to do, right? I aim to be in church on Sunday. I aim to read the Bible one of these days. I aim to start praying more often. Finally, the pastor interrupted her and said, My dear lady, you've been aiming long enough. It is time to pull the trigger. So where do we have our lives aimed? Here in this morning's gospel, Jesus knew that the day of his death was getting closer and closer and closer. And Jesus' aim was pointed straight to God. After all, if you're going to die, what other hope is there? So, on that Monday, Thursday evening, Jesus submitted to God's will. And he prayed, not my will, but thy will be done. And then, on that Holy Friday, he took up his cross and he carried it atop a hill where he was nailed to it, and he died a horrible death. He didn't deserve it, but Christ did it and left the results to God. And man, those results were indeed glorious, were they not? For on that Easter morning, he rose again to prove that sin and death no longer have any power over us. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are called to live according to God's will, to do it no matter what, no matter how hard, no matter where it leads or how unpopular it might be. We are called to get out there and to push forward, ever forward, and to leave the results to God. Amen. Please rise and body your spirits as we sing, O God, my faithful God.
God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. The power of sin is put to death in this holy flood, and we are raised with Christ Jesus to new life. We are united with all of the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and sent out in mission for the life of the world. Jeff and Emily, trusting the grace and, lo and love of God, you desire to have your child baptized, if so say, we do. we do. Jeff and Emily, do you promise to help Maxwell grow in the Christian faith and life, if so say, we do. We do. Shallon and William, as his sponsor, do you promise to help Maxwell grow in the Christian faith and life, if so say, I do. People of God, do you promise to support Maxwell and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, say, we do. Yes. Jeff, Emily, Shalin, and William, I ask you to reject sin, profess your faith in Christ, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of the, this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, we do. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. Will the congregation please rise in body or spirit? Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Christ Jesus, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He is to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He is sent to heaven. He is seated at the right of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the union of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The congregation may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You watch the mountains that send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus carried us to safety and freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up. For Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Wash away sin in this cleansing water. Clothe the baptized with Christ, and claim your daughters and sons, no longer slave or free, no longer male or female, but one with all of the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I know, I know. Okay, if you will uh, put it over here so that, there we go, there we go. Maxwell, Richard Dandura, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. Wash them from sin. Yes, I know. And raise them to eternal life. Sustain Maxwell with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. We have a... We have a future choir. There we go. There we go. 
Maxwell Richard Jandura, child of God. You, are, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. I'm going to let you hold this. There you go. Through baptism, God has made this young man a new member of the priesthood that we all share in Christ Jesus so that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. So let us now welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the Lord's family and the mission we share. Join us as we give praise to God and bear God's creative and redeeming word to all of the world. Amen. I think it is quite appropriate to welcome Max into the family of faith by a acclamation, a round of applause, please. Please rise in body or spirit for the prayers of the people. You can blow that out. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, by your word you created the universe, and through your prophet Isaiah, you gave the gift of sustaining the weary with a word. Open our ears and our weary hearts to receive your spoken word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, your wisdom is life. Make us eager recipients of your word that we may live life wisely. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You hear our voices, Lord God. You listen to our prayers. Give us wisdom to call upon you when sorrow, death, or adversity nears, that we may receive your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you clearly suffered as the Messiah. As we help others bear their crosses in life, Make us receptive to receive ministry from whomever will help us carry our own burdens. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Make us mindful, Holy Spirit, of the deep sufferings of the poor, the lonely, and the afraid in every church, town, city, and country. Give us joy in serving others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We bring before you specific people with special needs that require divine care. Hear us as we lift them both in our minds and hearts as within our weekly celebration newsletter, as well as those newly named before you. Steve Olson, Stacy Reed, Margaret and Deb Ajo, Pastor Max Lucado, and Richard Strasser. Lord, in your mercy. Be with those who have special needs known only to you that they may hear your guiding voice. Today, we lift up the Lichtenberger family, those affected by natural disasters, flooding, earthquakes, hurricanes, and fires, those people still in Afghanistan, and those making their new homes in the United States, those infected with or who have lost a loved one to COVID-19, all essential workers, those who own or work for small businesses, those who are now unemployed, those who work from home, those who are struggling with mental illness or addictions and their families, those who hold political office, those who are serving our country, Ian Bramick, Robert Shambo, Rachel Flores, Owen Green, Devin Kearney, Tyler Miller, Trevor Danielson, and Ryan Lloyd. Our companion synods, the Mumbulu Diocese in Tanzania, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land, and the Southeastern Pennsylvania Synod. Our bishops, Elizabeth Eaton and Donald Crist, and their staff, the Celebration Lutheran Church Council and staff, and our pastor, the Reverend James Fogel. Lord, in your mercy. Open our hearts always so that we may always experience and rejoice in your grace. Today, we especially give thanksgiving for our members, Amy Kramer, Betty Lotta, 
Justin, Michelle, Madeline, and Charlie Lair. Those with birthdays this week, Regan Tronkonsko, Saren Munihan, Kim Shalak, Anna Livingston, Andrew Brown, and Ruth Klosterhouse. And those with anniversaries this week, Frank and Trudy Bulow, Mike and Linda Bierbaum, Tim and Amy Kramer. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Eternal God, we give thanks for our ancestors in the faith who are now at home with you. We look forward to that day when we are reunited in your creation. This day, we especially lift up the family and friends of Marilyn Pfeiffer. Lord, in your mercy. God of life, 20 years ago, the forces of evil and hate came to the shores of this country. Most of us in this congregation remember that day, the tragedy etched permanently within our minds. All of us watched helplessly as lives were lost, heroes were born, and a nation was forever changed. However, let us never forget that through the pain and sorrow, we also witnessed the resolve of a nation. As a nation, we saw chaos give birth to courage, fear transformed into fortitude, and destruction give way to determination. In the midst of all the brokenness, freedom stood immovable. Today, we remember those we lost. Today, we honor the heroes who saved so many on that day and over the following two decades. And especially on this day, we grieve with the families who over the last 20 years have suffered so much. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear us now as we together pray for this community of faith. Gracious, Gracious God, God, we, we the, the family, family of faith, faith known as Celebration Lutheran Church, Church thank, thank you for the opportunity to carry out the mission of celebrating you through our community and the world. Please continue to guide us as we grow, prosper, and live out your will in everything we do. Well, we pray this in the name of Jesus. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace. Now, I know many are uh, nervous about shaking hands and all that. If you are nervous about that, don't shake hands. I suggest that you cross your arms around you and just say the peace of the Lord be with you. Okay? All right. So, let us share the peace. Okay, we worship with our offerings, and um, again, we're going to pass the offering uh, plate, so hopefully it will be, uh, it will work out fine. Again, this is the first Sunday we're going to be back doing all this stuff, so I had to, I had to be retrained again, so uh, here we go. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler, ruler of, of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings, blessings as you have granted us to new life, life in Christ. Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, who you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word sent from the heavens to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was sung forth as your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all of your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in, or, in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death that he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection, taking bread and giving thanks, he said. Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and we take this cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith and truth that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom with all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. These are truly the gifts of God for all of God's people. You may come to the table of grace and you may also now be seated. <laughs> 